Welcome to LabMiss.com and our lab video series in Cisco ACS. You can find a complete list of ACS videos on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In this video, we will configure Wire 802.1x authentication in a Cisco ACS using PEEP and EPTLS. We will perform both machine and user authentication in a Windows machine to make sure the user can access the network only from a machine that is part of the domain. Here's our lab setup. We have a Cisco ACS version 5.4 on VLAN 32 at the IP of .100, and we have a domain controller as well as our certificate authority server at the IP of .40. Now for our test machine, we have LM Win 7 Test 1 that is part of a domain computer, and for the user, we have Admin 1 that is part of domain user. Now before we begin, I want to show you our test user and test machine on the Active Directory here under the user. We have admin1, and under computers, we have lmwin 7 test one for the computer. Okay, as far as our switch configuration, everything has been pre-configured from our previous lab at CC0090. So if you're interested as far as what we have completed on the configuration, make sure you check out that video. But for the port configuration, and here we're dealing with port 19, these are the .1x authentication configuration that we have placed under the interface. Now on the ACS, we also have the switch one added as our network device already. So under the network devices, we have here switch one with radius authentication enable and our share secret is Cisco. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is to enable machine access restriction, which is part of our machine authentication. So if you go under user and then active directory, this is where you did the active direct integration. And for some reason, our ACS got disconnected from our domain. So what we're going to do quickly is to join it back or connect it back to the domain. So our domain name is labminutes.com and username, we have a dedicated account called ACSAD. And then we can do test connection. We get our green check, which is good. And then we can click join. So now while that's running, we can hop onto the machine access restrictions tab and here by default is disabled so in order to enable machine authentication we need to have that box checked so what it does is machine access restriction will correlate the mac address of the machine to the mac address is coming in on the user radius request and that way they will identify if whether or not the machine has been previously authenticated and there's a few more parameters that you can adjust here and this is related to cache distribution this is something new on acs 5.4 where the Mark cache will be replicated to the secondary ACS node. And here we need to specify the cache distribution group. So let's go ahead and configure a group called LMR group. Okay, so this is to make sure the machine cache is replicated to the backup node. So when the primary node is fail, when the user comes authenticating back to the network, it already have that cache presence on the backup node. Okay, so we can go and save change and let's go back and make sure there you go, it's joined and connected. So we are good to go on that. Next, we're going to create a certificate authentication profile. And this is for the second part of the lab where we do ETLS. So under here, certificate authentication profile, and this is to specify what attributes on the certificate that you want to use to identify a username while you're trying to authorize that particular user. So for name, we'll call it LM cert CN because we're going to be using common name. You can see you can use subject alternative name or email address, for example. And again, you need to make sure those attributes are present on the certificate itself. And then we'll submit. Next, we're going to include that certificate profile into our new uh, identity store sequence. So right now we only do AD local. So we create a, a new one that includes the certificate. Profiles in there, we're going to call it certificate AD and local, and we're going to enable certificate base and select the certificate profile that we just created, as well as the password base. And first, we want the ACS to check AD and follow by local users. Okay, again, this is for EPTLS when the user uses a client based certificate to authenticate. We need to tell ACS how to obtain the user attributes from the AD as part of the authorization. So we need to make sure since our, all of our users or our test user admin one is located in AD, 
we want to include AD for additional attribute retrieval. Click Submit. So the way the machine and user authentication is going to work, it's going to be a two-step process. First, machine will come in and authenticate. So at that time, you only want to make sure that the machine have enough access just to lock into the AD and nothing more. And that's the first round of authentication. Once you use a lock-in, it will be granted a full permission to the network. What we're going to configure now is a downloadable ACL for a successful machine authentication. You can see from the previous lab, we have permit all in there already. But we're going to create one more for LM. I'm going to call it AD lock-in. And again, let me copy and paste, make sure there's no typo. Because when there's typo, the ACL doesn't get downloaded. So the first line, we're going to enable DSCP request and DNS request as a standard and to allow the communication to our domain control at 32.40. Just going to permit all traffic. Submit, and that's to allow the machine to be able to lock into the domain. Next, we're going to create authorization profile to use that downloadable ACL. So create, give it a name, LM wired AD login. And for common tasks, static LM AD login. And then submit. Since we're dealing with wire authentication, again, this is something that we created from the previous video. We already have the LM wired access service created. So if you click on that and look at allow protocol, we have already enabled EAP TLS and PEEP with MS Chat V2. Now if we go under the identity, which is part of the authentication rule. We have one created for the wire map from the previous video. So we're going to create one more for our .1x. So we'll call it wire .1x. And for the condition, we're going to use radius IETF. We said that for the MAC address authentication bypass, we had the service type selected as call check. But for a regular wire.1x, we want to select frame. Click OK and then add. For our identity source, we're going to use the cert AD local that we just created. Click OK. So you can see we don't really have to create two separate rules for PEEP, which is username, password based, or EAP TLS, which is certificate based. We just we kind of combine the identity stores into a single sequence already with the cert and AD and local. So ACS is kind of smart enough to go through that list. And if it's a cert, we use the cert. If it's the username, password, it will go through the AD and local. That kind of shorten your configuration a little bit there. Instead of having two rules, you you only use one rule. Okay, so a save change. And now under authorization rule, so far we only have a compound condition. We're going to add a couple more condition here. One would be external group, since we're going to condition based on the group membership on the AD. Also, there's right down below, there's a condition called was machine authenticated, and it is to check whether or not the machine has been previously authenticated. Okay, then we can create a rule, and we'll call the first one for the first round of authentication, which is machine authentication. And for our condition, compound condition, can we go through radius attributes? The first one is NAS port type, and that should be type Ethernet. Go add, and then we'll do service type, and that should be frame. And then logical and. And for external group, we want to make sure that the computer is part of a domain computer. And this is, these are the groups that we added when we integrate the ACS to AD during our ACS to uh, AD integration videos. We don't need the WASP machine authentication at this point. And for authorization profile, we want the machine to only have access to the domain controller for user lock-in. And OK, we'll create one more. This one is going to be for wire user. Again, compound condition for radius, IETF, as port type. Actually, what we would have done is, let's do this. So I have to go through all that. We can duplicate below. There you go. And then that's just user. Compound condition stays the same. What's different is the group membership is now instead of computer, we're going to select domain users. And we definitely want to make sure the machine authenticated is true. And we want to permit all access if that's the case. 
Okay, make sure all these make sense and then we'll save changes. Okay, so that should be all the configuration that we need on the ACS. So let's review real quick what we have configured so far. Here under the service selection rules, the, the request will come in and as far as radius request, if it's coming from a switcher, it will be matching this particular rule right here, rule number three, and it will be passed on to Allen Wire. And again, this is something we configured on the previous video. Now under the access services, we have Allen Wired created and under Allen Wired, under allow protocol, we've got EAP TLS and PEEP. For identity, if it's matching wire.1x, we're going to look up whether it's certificate or AD or local database. And once authentication succeeded, it will move on to authorization. And here we have one for a machine authorization and one for user authorization. And for the user, we're conditioning based on the previous successful machine authentication results.